we're standing in the atrium space adjacent to the huge cocoon in this, the Darwin Centre. The cocoon is a 65-metre-long, eight-storey-high sprayed concrete structure, but actually finished in Venetian plaster. Um, the building we're standing in cost just over £45 million to, to erect, uh, but the project as a whole, with all of the decant, demolition, uh, the bringing in of, of new facilities, new exhibition space, uh, totaled £78 million, uh, so uh, about equal to the museum's annual turnover. The Darwin Centre is a whole new wing of the museum and it represents the future of the museum and it turns us as an organisation inside out and allows the public to walk into some of the spaces that they would never go into. We have our scientists, our research scientists, our collections, 20 million specimens and the public all coming together and the public will be able to walk through our collection store and see scientists doing real work and learn more about the work that we do. We haven't actually set up labs to be sort of demonstration labs. I mean, these are real working labs with real working scientists in them. So the, the scientists aren't on show like an exhibit. That this, is, this is them going about their daily work. Um, and that actually is quite important for the museum because it's about doing the real thing. So we've got real specimens, real science, and real scientists. The challenge, of course, is going to be to... Uh, try and communicate how science is done, and it's not just endless eureka moments, um, but large amount of collecting of inf uh, information, doing all those experiments, all those observations, and bringing them together um, to make some conclusion about the world. But given the fact that the museum is actually a leading research institute, by the time members of the public have visited the museum and by the time they've left, somebody will have discovered something new about the natural world. And there aren't many places you can go where you can say that. The new facilities is brilliant for us because it's ensuring all of these uh, old collections and the new ones coming will keep safe from many threats that we got at the moment, like pests and environmental changes. So the collection is now in a brand new building with all of the conditions uh, control, temperature, humidity uh, will be fine. They've been fine for the last 200. 50 years, so they will be all right for the next couple centuries more. Within this room, there are 320 bound volumes, like this one here, collected between about 1605 and the 1740s that were owned by Sir Hans Sloan, and they form the real heart of the Natural History Museum. What look like books are, in fact, not books in the sense that they're full of writing, they're actually full of plant specimens. Um, before the time of Linnaeus, uh, botanists and apothecaries used to collect plants and they would stick them into bound volumes like this and glue them down. These days we actually do it very differently. We have loose sheets which are just laid on top of each other. So these books are an amazing repository of hundreds of thousands of plant specimens. This particular room um, has been a real labour of love, um, not only from the point of view of the collections, but also from the engineering point of view. Each one of these uh, struts has been en engineered individually to fit inside the cocoon, and all have been drilled to accommodate the very particular needs of each size of the book.